Before we get started, I wanted to review this disclaimer with everyone. This is standard practice of Fannie Mae. All, every effort has been made to ensure the reliability of the session content, Fannie Mae's selling and servicing guides, and their updates, including guide announcements and release notes, are the official statements of Fannie Mae's policies and procedures and control in the event of discrepancies between the information in the seminar and the guides. Okay, so let's get started. Today's topic is the impact of COVID-19 on appraisals. We understand that lenders are facing challenges today uh, with appraisals. Uh, they are extremely busy at this time as well. Feedback that we have received from not only our lender partners, but appraisers indicated that in some cases, appraisers were not able to inspect the subject property on the interior. And of course, there are uh, measures that have been implemented in certain states that restrict movement. And so that's impacting uh, the ability for appraisers to do their work. So out of that came flexibilities. We had uh, a lot of meetings last week with our regulator, FHFA, and Freddie Mac, and uh, what we're going to cover today came out of those meetings. The best resource for anything related to appraisals at Fannie Mae is our appraiser page, and you can see the link there at the top. We're going to go through that. This is especially important with the appraisal flexibilities that we rolled out on Monday, March 23rd. This is where you're going to get the most up-to-date information. And keep in mind that this is a fluid situation. So information such as the FAQs or guidance on appraisals could change at any time. So this is a source of truth related hey, to these appraisal flexibilities are going to be found here. Hey, Michael, it's Ken. Hey, I think we're, I'm still seeing the cover page, and somehow I screwed up and stuck an arrow on the cover page, and I'm not really sure how I did that, so my apologies to everybody. But I don't think we're rotating through the deck. Um, we just have the, the Fannie Mae Q1 2020 appraisal update page showing. Uh, have okay. You I don't know if you need to reshare your screen and that's okay. Yeah. Room, so. Okay. So Natalie has the ball and it doesn't look like I can move the ball. Can you move that ball to me, Natalie? Yeah. Sorry about that. One second. Here we go. That's a pretty important one, right? <laughs> yeah. Yes, so there we go. <laughs> All right. I am now the presenter. Perfect. The good news is Thanks. I really didn't get into much of the content. So uh, we'll start off with that now. So I won't go through what I just uh, covered, but you can now see it here. And this is the link to the Fannie Mae appraiser page. The first thing that we're going to do is talk about the help and training and uh, what's available to uh, appraisers or anyone who works for a lender who might be a, a review appraiser. This is going to be uh, useful information to you. I also wanted to mention that we just rolled out our March newsletter, the Q1 newsletter, so you can get access to that uh, from the appraiser page as well. Okay. The first thing in help and training is links to all of the forms that are acceptable to Fannie Mae. Everyone is familiar with these forms. I'm not going to go through them. But I am going to talk about what forms can be utilized in certain situations depending on the type of appraisal that you do during this uh, temporary period of appraisal flexibilities, which lasts until May 17th. Importantly, here we have the modified certification 
limiting conditions and scope of work for both desktop appraisals and for exterior only appraisals. So uh, this is going to need to be included in all of your appraisal reports where you deviate from the traditional appraisal. Hey, you guys, um, I believe that we're um, having, I'm getting a lot of requests that nobody is able to actually hear. Um, if we can hold on just one second here. Is anybody able to hear me? Please let me know in the private chat section. I can hear you. We're coming through to each other, but now customers are saying that they're not able to hear us. So one second. Oh, good. Okay. So we do have a lot of people that can hear. So that's good. All right. Um, sorry about that, guys, for interrupting. I just wanted to make sure. Thank you. No worries, Natalie. If you need me to turn up the volume, I can gladly do that. Uh, and others on the line can turn up the volume on their end as well if they're having trouble hearing. Thank so, you so much. What we're pointing out here on this particular slide is uh, the lender letter and other resources related to the appraisal flexibilities that we rolled out in response to COVID-19. Okay, so this is where you're going to get that information. You can just click on that and it opens up um, the lender letter. And this is what you're going to see. And you click on that link, it's going to take you to that lender letter. At this point, I'm just going through the navigation so everyone understands where they can find things on the appraiser page. Okay? So, we worked with FHFA and uh, Freddie Mac uh, to come up with the guidance around appraisal flexibilities, and uh, we are in alignment with Freddie Mac on this. So uh, anything that we're doing here at Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac is doing as well, uh, which should make it uh, much easier uh, for not only appraisers, but also lenders to uh, operationalize the different types of appraisal reports. So during COVID-19, in many cases, lenders are unable to obtain an appraisal based on a full interior and exterior inspection of the subject property. There's a variety of reasons um, for that, which we're going to talk about in just a bit. In response, we are allowing temporary flexibilities to our requirements. We are working closely with Freddie Mac under the guidance of our regulator, FHF offer these temporary measures, and that is an important part of this. Measures are temporary. Hopefully we can put the COVID-19 crisis uh, behind us and uh, return to normalcy uh, as it relates to appraisals. So this is a matrix which explains what appraisal products are appropriate for purchases, limited cash out refinances, and cash out refinances. So this is in the lender letter, access on the appraiser page. I would keep this handy. Your lender AMCs may be ordering appraisals, and those appraisals may not be appropriate depending on the type of transaction. So going to be important for you to play that role of educating your lender. And also, if scenarios come up uh, where you are not able to inspect the subject property as you normally would in a traditional appraisal, then uh, as an appraiser, you need to understand what the next option is in order of preference. The traditional appraisal on the 1004, 1073 with an interior and exterior inspection is always at the top of the list. 
However, if you run a state which currently restricts movement, uh, mandatory restrictions are in place in terms of what you are permitted and not permitted to do, you may not be able to inspect the interior of the subject property or perform any type of inspection for that matter. And the lender may be unaware of that. So uh, if any of those situations arise, then uh, you are going to need to take uh, the next available option. For example, in the case of a purchase transaction, if you are not able to do a traditional appraisal, it's not feasible to do that, then you would do the desktop appraisal, which is an appraisal that is performed without an inspection of the subject property. You would literally appraise the property from your desk. Now, this is applicable for purchase transactions, and we did that because a lot of information is available to appraisers online. MLS, listings, photographs of the interior and exterior of the subject property. So the appraiser can really paint that picture of the property and then report on all the aspects of the property, typically on purchase transactions. Hey, Michael. Familiarize yourself with the lender letter, and uh, you may need to call upon this at some time. Yeah, Ken. Hey, I just want to I want to clarify, make sure we're um, clear on one thing. Though we have kind of the pecking order of traditional desktop exterior, uh, for example, on principal residence on a purchase, keeping in mind if if the if the lender comes to you and orders, let's say, the desktop, um, in and even though you potentially may be able to do the traditional. If they come to you with a desktop, um, I would just fulfill it in that in that um, in that manner. Um, <clears throat> unless you want to get back to them and communicate to them that you could actually do a traditional appraisal, that may be fine. But don't just reject it because you think they've sent you that request versus the traditional out of the gate. Um, every lender is going to function probably different, uh, keeping in mind all of their their technologies that are in place for fulfillment uh, could very well be different. Some people may be able to actually um, uh, adapt very quickly and create the correct type of appraisal out of the gate. Um, it was our intent to do it this way, but we think there might be some uh, issues with that lender to lender. So just, it's this is a good chart to understand, but if they came to you as a desktop and you knew you could do traditional, work with your lender to let them know that. Um, but work with them on any aspect of any of this uh, based off of the requirements that you have within all of your own market areas. Thanks a lot, Ken. Mm -hmm. And I do want to point out that on certain transactions, only a traditional appraisal is acceptable. So, for instance, on a cash-out refinance, we do not allow the appraiser to do exterior only appraisal. So uh, these are the desktop forms that appraisers can utilize. 1004 single family form, 1073 condo, the uh, co-op form. Anybody doesn't do a lot of co-op lending, uh, but uh, you may be asked to do a co-op from time to time. Uh, the two to four, form 1025, and the uh, manufactured home appraisal, uh, 1004C. So for exterior only, you have 2055 for a single family and also detached condominium units. And the 1075, which is the exterior only condo. The co-op, exterior only, 2095. Now the small residential income, 1025, and the MH appraisal form, 1004C are uh, only the interior, exterior type of appraisal, uh, but uh, you are permitted to use those for exterior only appraisal because they don't have uh, an exterior only form for those types of properties.
Okay, so we have a uh, modified set of instructions, scope of work, limited conditions, and certification. And um, these are your links to those. Uh, so you're going to use these for your desktop appraisals and for your exterior only appraisals. You're going to insert the modified forms into the addendum, and you can't alter uh, those type forms. You will also want to make sure that you sign and complete page six, which is uh, the signature where you put your license information and other information uh, related to the assignment, you want to make sure that you complete that. And we've gotten guidance from the foundation, you do not need to sign and fill out the modified certs that you're going to put in the addendum. Ken, anything you want to add here? Um. Yeah, I mean, I, I, there's been some guidance as well from the foundation uh, that everybody should should take a look at um, around. Um, I know everybody's going to get uh, one of the biggest questions we've gotten back is whether or not, and, and we'll discuss, and I see some of the chat room going. There's some questions in there, everybody, that we'll get to in the Q&A at the end uh, or the reading of Q&A letters that have been, or questions that have been presented to us already, uh, so we'll be able to answer many of your questions. Um, but you know, the, the, we want this copy and pasted into an agenda in text format, not as an image. Uh, and you would just sign page six like you typically do. Um, you know, the subcommittee, the foundation, um, everybody's working together on this so that there's not some sort of gotcha moment to the appraiser about, well, this says one thing and this contradicts it and why, you know, does it make it okay for us to do this? Um, everybody's coming together on this and understands, um, you know, the need for flexibility. Uh, so I would also reference those other sites to understand um, obligation and, and, you know, the guidance that's being provided uh, so that everybody gets more comfortable with, uh, with this logic. Thanks, Ken. So one thing that appraisers will recognize is that certification number 10 has been removed from these modified certifications for both desktop and exterior only. And we remove this in recognition that the appraiser may have relied on information from interested parties, such as uh, the borrower or, or the realtor. Because what you're going to do especially for these desktop appraisals, is you're going to have to possibly reach out to interested parties to gather information about the property, right? Maybe you are seeing in, in public record some information that you want to verify, or there's some information that's simply not in public record. You can't find any information in MLS in terms of uh, the bedroom count or the bathroom count. Uh, you'll want to reach out to interested parties in the transaction to gather that information so that you can complete the report. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, we have developed FAQs in anticipation of some of the questions that are going to be asked, you can get to those FAQs through the appraiser page by simply clicking on FAQs. And I think you're going to find those helpful, and they may answer many of the questions that you have. And again, as I said earlier, the appraiser engagement mailbox is another option if you have a question that cannot be answered through those FAQs. And we're going to cover some questions that we've gotten from industry participants and even appraisers uh, later in the session. Ken's going to take care of that.
So these are going to be updated as needed. Uh, keep in mind this is a fluid situation and uh, we're going to get questions that maybe we didn't expect to get, right, uh, or didn't anticipate. So you also may have questions and that's one of the reasons why we really want you to use the appraiser engagement page because we are going to possibly turn some of those questions into FAQs depending on how frequently we see those questions, okay? So this is the place where you want to really stay up to date on, on what's going on because we may clarify FAQs or add new FAQs at any time. And again, we're in alignment with Freddie Mac on this. So our FAQs are essentially their same FAQs. That should bring some consistency to this process. Because we know that this is new for everyone, not only the appraisers, but also the lenders and the AMCs as well. Okay, so if you're looking for information on desktop appraisals, uh, just click on the link on the appraiser page. And that's going to take you to that modified set of limited conditions for both uh, your desktop appraisals and your exterior only. You can see that there. Let's first talk about the desktop appraisals, okay? First of all, uh, this is the cert that you're going to use for the 1004, 1073, 1025, 1004C, which is the manufactured home appraisal, or the 2090, okay? Because you are not going to be inspecting the subject property with the desktop appraisal, you'll need to include this modified certification in your appraisal report, as I said, in the addendum. So you just want to copy and paste that and, and put it in the addendum, or if you want to put it in a more prominent place, uh, it, it cannot uh, be altered, as I said earlier, and also you cannot remove the uh, certification, limited conditions, and scope of work that uh, comes with the appraisal report. This one supersedes the one that you're going to be signing in the appraisal report when you do a desktop appraisal. Okay. Again, uh, if you want that modified cert for exterior only appraisals, click on that link, and it's going to uh, this is what you're going to use on the 2055 exterior only for single family, 1075, 2095, and the 1004C, again, uh, there's not a specific exterior only appraisal report for that or the 1025. It's obviously understood that for your 2055 you're doing an exterior appraisal, but we still want you to include uh, this modified certification in all of these reports that you see here. Ken, anything to add about the uh, modified certs for the desktop or exterior only? Uh, uh, only that, keeping in mind, um, we, we don't want you to kind of, we don't want it created as an image, uh, like an additional PDF that's inserted. We, we want it to be as text. Um, I, I, there's some other pieces coming up that Michael will address, um, but, but the rationale behind this is we're also trying to, we, we also will be able to then identify uh, the specifics behind um, the extent of the inspection uh, by being able to search those words. So there's, there's, there's reason um, for your protection, but there's also reason um, for others, uh, for, for us, uh, at the agencies to be able to identify these things 
um, because form type might not be as specific as we'd like, right? So, so that it's a keyword that allows us uh, to be able to address those things. So just that's just a little bit of understanding as to the why. Thanks, Ken. So uh, let's go over uh, the uh, appraisal report instructions and the flexibilities for the exterior only and desktop appraisals. Again, these are temporary appraisal flexibilities. Only applications dated March 23rd uh, up until May 17th. Now, of course, there's always the possibility that we may extend these appraisal flexibilities. Again, uh, you're going to go to the appraiser page on FannieMae.com uh, to see if we are going to continue these appraisal flexibilities beyond May 17th. So when an interior inspection is not feasible, and again, uh, that could be because of a state-mandated uh, quarantine that limits uh, movement of certain individuals who are considered to be non uh, non-essential uh, or health issues on behalf of the appraiser or possibly the occupant of the property. So when it's not feasible because of COVID-19 to complete an interior inspection, an exterior only or desktop appraisal is allowed for many mortgage transactions. And that, that matrix that we looked at earlier is going to spell all that out for you. Fannie and Freddie have the same flexibilities. This is directed by the Federal Housing Finance Administration, or agency, excuse me, uh, and they are our regulator. So they are the ones who uh, created these uh, flexibilities and approved of these flexibilities. Allowable flexibilities depend on the specific loan transaction. Lenders are responsible for ordering an allowed appraisal type. And again, uh, if you are as an appraiser unable to complete the assignment, for instance, you receive a request for a traditional appraisal with an interior and exterior inspection, and you cannot complete that, then you would need to communicate with your lender or AMC and uh, discuss uh, the next available option in order of preference. And again, you're going to find that on that matrix that we covered earlier. So this is not a situation where the appraiser says, I think I can come up with a value based on an exterior only appraisal or a desktop appraisal. You, you need to comply with the request that was sent uh, to you by the lender or AMC unless it's not feasible um, to complete the assignment and then you would need to go to the next available option in order of preference. And again, make sure you communicate with your lenders around that. Read lender letter 2020-04 for details. Appraisers must follow specific instructions when submitting their appraisal reports, okay? And appraisal management companies and lenders must be familiar with the appraisal report instructions to help appraisers meet the requirements. They're, they're going to do the best that they can, but because of the fact that many of these state-imposed restrictions are very nuanced, they may not understand every aspect of the restrictions that have been imposed um, by the states. So uh, it's your job as an appraiser to educate them on that. Okay, so let's talk about the use of the word desktop or exterior in the map reference field. We chose the map reference field because it's, it's a field, first of all, that's not part of the uniform appraisal data set. And uh, we got get a lot of different information in that field. So it's not necessarily an essential field now, especially because of digital mapping that's utilized by most appraisers, okay? So um, 
If you perform a desktop appraisal, for example, on Form 1004, instead of entering the map reference, you are going to enter the word desktop. And if you do an expert appraisal, whether it's the 2055, which is an exterior only, or a two to four family, which does not have a designated exterior form, you can place the word exterior in the map reference field. So uh, this is gonna help Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac identify appraisals using the temporary flexibilities that are in place so we can minimize any confusion about compliance with our appraisal guidelines. That's the reason that we're doing this. So, so we can flag these appraisals based on whether it was a desktop or an exterior, that they, it was an appraisal that, will, that deviates from uh, the standard appraisal. And again, you want to include the appropriate modified location depending on whether it's a desktop or exterior only. Again, if you're doing a traditional appraisal with an interior and exterior inspection, which many of you will continue to do, then none of this really applies. Proceed as you normally would. Anything to add there, Ken? Nope, not at all. Um, you know, just, yeah, there's nothing that needs to be added in there if it's traditional, right? If it's the standard of, of what you've done with a, with a uh, full interior inspection, then you don't, you can put whatever you used to put in there, map reference or whatever, but it's only if you're, you're going to any of the flexibilities that we'd want that identified. Again, it's a keyword that helps us um, through understanding uh, the business and, and what, what length and depths of inspection you, you went through uh, to provide the results. Thanks, Ken. And one more thing I'd like to add is, as an appraiser, if you want to describe the steps that you took to gather information when you're doing a desktop appraisal or exterior only appraisal, that may be uh, you, okay? Uh, that's a step that is probably going to also help the lender understand uh, what data sources you relied on and may help them uh, as they underwrite the appraisal to, to understand that uh, because you weren't able to access the interior of the property, uh, that the information that you're providing, for instance, on the uh, interior materials and condition and your condition and quality rating uh, is, is based on information gathered from certain sources. Okay, so uh, what is sufficient information? Information that's necessary to uh, develop credible assignment results. Where we're getting in um, uh, to that use path area. So uh, I'm gonna read this verbatim so that everyone understands. Uh, effective immediately, uh, Fannie Mae temporary flexibilities to our appraisal inspection and reporting requirements. As described below, we will accept an alternative the traditional required under the selling guide, chapter dash one, appraisal requirements. When an interior inspection is not feasible because of COVID-19 concerns, we will allow a desktop appraisal, which is one that you do not the subject property, exterior only appraisal, where you only inspect the exterior of the property in lieu of the interior and exterior inspection appraisal or what we're calling the traditional appraisal. If a traditional appraisal is not obtained, and there is insufficient information about the property for an appraiser to be able to complete an appraisal assignment with a desktop or exterior only appraisal, the loan will not be eligible for delivery to Fannie Mae. Okay, so uh, if as an appraiser, you are faced with a situation where you're doing a desktop appraisal, for example, and uh, you, don't have sufficient information about the subject property. There are no photographs of the property in MLS, uh, and public record is void of information. You cannot uh, develop an appraisal that is credible. Uh, 
then you should uh, decline the assignment. The lender will not be able to deliver the loan uh, to Fannie Mae. If they uh, cannot obtain an appraisal with credible results. Anything to add there, Ken? Other than, you know, keeping in mind, um, you know, we're allowing, I think the word flexibility is, is you know, key here, right? We're allowing the ability uh, to manage business and for everybody to keep, um, keep their business going, you know, through alternative means. Um, but that doesn't, but we don't get passes on the specific things that we as appraisers always have to deal with. Um, our ethics provisions are, you know, within USPAP and providing enough information uh, to produce a credible result. So those are still obligations. There's, there is no pass there. So if you don't have enough information, get back to your lender and, and your client and just explain to them that there is, you know, we're lacking on enough sufficient information to produce uh, a report. Um, you know, I, I know you'll probably get some pushback on those kinds of things, but but don't get yourself in hot water over it. It's not worth it. So, um, you know, we, we back that stance, uh, and, and we want everybody to do the right thing. Uh, this isn't trying to force you down a path that you shouldn't go. In fact, quite the opposite. Uh, if you've got enough information to fill it out, great. If you don't, you just need to let everybody know. Thanks, Ken. And uh, as Ken said, let everyone know it's very important to communicate if you cannot develop a credible value based on the information that you have. Okay, so let's talk about the steps that are involved in authenticating the information. Uh, trust but verify to the best of your ability is a key thing that you want to remember. So many of you are familiar with this process, but just wanted to go over uh, the steps that are involved in authenticating information. Step one, analyze available data, whether it's coming from public records or MLS or from some other source. Step two, compare and contrast the information that you've gathered with other data sources. Step three, leverage online resources and fact check. There's a tremendous amount of information that's available online. Uh, we can't endorse any of the online sites, but I think everyone knows um, what they are. Also, satellite imagery can be extremely helpful if you're doing a desktop appraisal or exterior only, you want to get a sense for what surrounds the subject property. If you can't inspect the property, then you have to rely on satellite imagery to understand what surrounds the subject property and to complete, uh, for instance, the, the view rating and the view description uh, for the subject property. Step five, utilize the data that is most reasonable. And I think I may have skipped a step. Test for reasonableness is step four. So if you follow these steps, there's a good chance that uh, you're gonna be able to make that decision on whether you can produce a credible report. And chances are you're going to have the most relevant data possible uh, in your appraisal report. And that's what we're really striving for, especially in those situations where uh, you're doing a desktop appraisal or an exterior only. Okay, so I'm gonna hand this over to Ken DeFeo, who is to review some questions that we have received from appraisers prior to this webinar and also other industry participants. And I'm not sure, Ken, if you're gonna be able to get to any of the questions that are coming through the chat pane, uh, but if you can, that would be fantastic. Thanks. So, thanks, Michael. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna go through, so there, there were some um, uh, uh, questions provided to us um, last night, uh, and, and we'll go through, we'll go through those. I think it's going to answer the vast majority of what's popping up in the chat. If we can get just a few others, 
Um, we'll, we'll try to do that. Uh, I'm looking at a couple of them now, and I think, you know, we're not an overriding, um, th there are questions being asked that are going to require uh, you as the appraiser in the market to understand the answers to those questions. Um, you will you will need to reach out. Um, you know, this does typically fall under um, the, the, the purview of financial services industry, uh, but the fact of the matter is you, you're still going to need to know that, and you need to, re you need to reach out to local um, authorities to figure that out and see what they're going to do. Uh, we're not here to, to, to you know, to provide a guidance one way or the other on that because we're not, you know, we're not in those jurisdictions and we don't have any jurisdictional authority in those cases. It's, it's, it behooves you to understand what's going on in your markets, whether that's at the state level, county level, city level. Um, those are the things that you're going to have to try to understand uh, to keep yourself, you know, safe, um, but also make sure you're not violating any uh, ordinances that may be in place during this time. So let's start with the first question that was provided. What if my lender client insists on an interior inspection no matter what? So the communication is key as, as a part of this answer. Um, so I think with the guidance that's been pushed out, that, that, should, be, that should not be a problem uh, going forward. Now, it may have been on Monday prior to this all getting disseminated and even probably through yesterday on some level. But as everybody starts to read through the guidance and figure things out, I'm thinking it, it should calm itself. But the fact is, um, the communication in the inspection type uh, needs to be about the conditions within your market, um, and if it's an interior, and if an interior inspection is viable or not. Um, you know, there there are definitely um, different rules in every community at this point, and and some inspections may be viable, and some may not. Um, staying in place and not even leaving your home may be the only option. Those are the things that you work with your lender on and communicate them back. Um, in this in this deck that Michael just went through, there is also the chart that kind of gives you the packing order of the things that can happen. Um, so you, you need to determine uh, what's the best fit uh, for uh, that particular request, uh, and then you walk through that, and, and let's, let's hope that everybody does the right thing uh, and everybody stays safe. So that's the real underlying theme to that, is making sure that we're not getting anybody in trouble uh, by doing the wrong thing for putting you at risk. Uh, second question, can I ask the property owner seller to take photos and send them to me? Yes, uh, that is not a problem, and that can be on any of it, uh, whether it, it's the desktop or whether it is the uh, exterior. Uh, if you feel that a conversation with an agent, a borrower, um, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, that's why CERT 10 was removed. We understand the conflicts in potentially being unable to maybe verify that um, thoroughly enough uh, by getting uh, uh, information from interested parties. But the, but the idea here is, is to get you comfortable with being able to put as much information as you want and stating where you got the information from, um, from is fine. Uh, question three, uh, when does this new rule of doing desktops and exterior inspections go into effect? Um, it started on Monday. Uh, and the ex and the um, uh, you know the expiration date at the moment is May 17th. Uh, that is fluid, just like everything else in these times. Uh, nobody has the answers yet, uh, so that's why signing up to get the updates um, in through our newsletter process uh, is is probably a good thing for all of you to do. Uh, you know, you can go into slash appraiser go to our lender page. Uh, or our appraiser page, uh, sign up, and, and when we update things in, in, that, in that area, uh, you'll, you'll get notifications that there's been changes, and that should help keep you uh, current. Uh, question four, does this mean all current assignments given by different lenders as full interior observation assignments will now be converted to drive-bys and or desktops? So the simple answer here, if you've already gone out and done inspections, we, we, we would expect that you complete it uh, based off of that inspection. If you've made arrangements and it's physically possible for you to go do the inspection, we would, we would want that as well. Uh, if, for whatever reason, 
again, you go through kind of the tests, you know, health, you know, the, the, the safety of the occupants, the safety of yourself or, or local ordinances that say you have to stay in place, um, then, then we would go to those flexibilities and those other options. Uh, but work with your lender. Uh, I cannot emphasize enough how the communication between the lender and you, uh, the boots on the ground, uh, needs to happen. Uh, be very clear and make sure you take enough notes as well. Um, you know, your work file is going to be pretty important when it comes to a lot of this in the future state, so I would make sure you're really, um, uh, you're really making uh, good thorough notes about the conversations that you have with your lenders. Uh, or your clients and, and what you ultimately end up uh, uh, doing. Question five, many appraisers have already been warned by the borrowers when we enter the home uh, that the appraiser must wear gloves and masks. Is it appropriate to stop then and do a drive by or a desktop? So I think, again, you have to understand that for what it is. Is there, is there, um, and again, I think most of these questions were derived last week more than this week in a sense. Um, there were no flexibilities then, right? There are some flexibilities now. Um, so this should be vetted prior to the inspection. I mean, figure out uh, if there are issues uh, and work with the lender on the appropriate course of action is really our answer. Again, every market's different. All circumstances are different. Uh, if we can do a full appraisal, we would prefer, but we understand the challenges and the likelihood that's going to be, uh, you know, the, the few, not the many. Um, and at that point, uh, if you determine that the appropriate risk level for all as part of the transaction is something other than that, then, then we're fine with that, and that's where this flexibility comes into play. Uh, question six, what is the procedure for the appraiser to determine a drive-by or desktop for the client. So keeping in mind, the request is coming from the client. They should be as aware as you are of what is required. So what we want to make sure you're doing um, is follow the guidance. Uh, I think it is important uh, to explain um, if, 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 if somebody is asking you to do one thing over another, um, then, then you probably need to check uh, that that little chart that we had and ensure that uh, you're following the appropriate guidance. The, the, if you notice, there was not a desktop option uh, for refinance. And, you know, so if you get that, then you may want to reach back to your client and make sure the appropriate level of inspection uh, was performed and, and that you've done the right things. Uh, again, communication is key. Uh, question seven. Uh, when we do a desktop, are we using the 1004P? Uh, keep in mind that was part of a, of a totally different program and that it's not really part of any of this. Um, if you are part of those, those types of, of programs and that's what's being utilized, then you would stay that course. But for this, um, for, for what we're doing in, an, in, in, in this flexibility program, um, that that's really not part of the flexibility because uh, that is that is that's kind of working under completely different circumstances. Uh, so it's really not relative to this. Question A: Do we have a or do we have to provide a field comparable photo, or can we use the MLS photos for all assignments? Again, that's you know that's case by case, right? So our desktop. Um, from the desktop perspective, we're not, you know, we understand that that's exactly what you're doing, right? You have not left the home. You haven't done inspections. Um, we would love for you to be able to utilize MLS photos, understanding that there are sometimes bylaws or whatever within jurisdictions uh, that may not allow it. So make sure you're referencing all the material we're providing because we do give guidance around um, exhibits and photos and things that we're looking for, understanding that there are some limitations depending on certain markets. Uh, so we're asking you to give us your best, your best effort, good faith effort, uh, to give us what you can, the best you can. Um, when it comes to an exterior, um, you know, the exterior forms are going to be used. It also does say within that cert um, that you, you, you may be driving those comps. Um, you know, we think if you're out and you're about and you can, uh, that's a good course of action. The desktop, we understand that's different. Question nine, 
Can the appraiser rely on interior subject photos or details provided from the borrower or the interested party uh, in the transaction as long as the appraiser clearly notes the source in, her, in his or her report? So keeping in mind, I talked about it a little above the same way, CERT 10 has been eliminated um, from the alternative certifications that we're providing uh, that, we, that we want you to um, copy and paste. Uh, again, this is um, this is about this is as much about adequate information as anything. You know, if you're getting information and you can't verify any of it through, um, and you can't verify any of it through some other source, you know, if 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 you're seeing public record telling you one one thing and and the homeowner might be telling you something completely different. You know, asking for photos and details to understand what you have in front of you is absolutely fine. If you can validate those things and utilize those as information, that's also fine. Um, but keeping in mind, we just walked through that that you know second to last slide, I believe, which you know you still you're, you're still responsible to validate and verify information. Um, so it, it it's not um, you know use your best trust judgment. Again, if you can't do that, then you may have to uh, decline the assignment. Uh, if you can't produce credible enough results, then, then you, you need to explain that to uh, your client. Question 10. Uh, if we add the new verbiage about the scope of work, limiting conditions, et cetera, as recommended by the GSCs, how do we eliminate confusion with the language already pre-printed on the appraisal forms? Keep in mind, everybody's aware, so misleading, you know, our ethics provisions, you know, talk about misleading uh, the intended users and the client of the report. Uh, everybody is fully aware of what's happening. So there is no intent to mislead, um, and, and we're, I think we're, we're reasonably well covered there, right? And I, I think you need to, again, uh, there was a Q&A uh, Q or, or a question, uh, uh, an answer provided by the foundation. Um, as an advisory opinion, I believe, uh, don't quote me on that specifically, but there is guidance out at the Foundation website on just that. So keeping in mind, there is no intent to mislead. So by, by copying and pasting uh, the appropriate um, overriding certifications that we're providing to you, there should be no confusion. Uh, they should understand exactly what's going on, so there's no, there's no attempt to mislead. So we, we, we should be fine there. Question 11, can Fannie Mae, Mae make the clients accept the desktop and drive-bys and not assign interior observations until this issue has been contained? So again, this is the communication piece that we really need to put into play. If you're being asked to do one thing and it is impossible for you to do it for whatever the reasons may be, again, health, safety to yourself, safety to the occupants, um, standing ordinances that you cannot get out to those properties, then those are the communications you have with your client and understand the appropriate action uh, for whether or not you should be doing uh, one thing over another. So again, everything is different. All, um, you know, this is, you know, this is one of these fluid events, right? Not everything is standard in every single market, so you're going to need to know uh, the best way to communicate those results or those, those, um, your thoughts to the, the client and then settle on the appropriate level of inspection based off of that. Question 12, will Fannie Mae have any issue with reports that contain detailed extraordinary assumptions related to the potential unknowns due to the exterior only or the desktop assignments? So, you know, we're not asking anybody to check the box and the reconciliation, um, you know, stating uh, that it's subject to an extraordinary assumption. We already know that the certifications are taking care of that. We understand the level of detail um, that you're going to be um, going through, whether it be from an exterior only or a desktop. So there is, you know, we, don't, we do not want you checking that box um, as some sort of cover in that particular case. The, 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 it, you know, the new certification or the overriding certs address all of this, and, and we understand the limits, so there's, there's no need to, um, to check that box. In fact, that's not what we're looking for whatsoever, and, and we ask that that not happen. 
um, we already understand the level of, of the inspection. So again, there's no misleading. Uh, there's, there's nothing in that sense that should be problematic. Question 13. Uh, lenders and AMCs are moving appraisers from, removing appraisers from their approved panel, panels for threatening uh, that there will be no future work if the appraiser is unwilling um, you know, to perform interior inspections. Uh, they're asking in this question, can Fannie Mae tell the lender this is not an acceptable practice? So the, the best we can do, obviously, is, is provide the guidance on the flexibility which we've done. Again, I think much of these questions probably derived of the end of last week and the beginning of this week. As, as all lenders and AMCs have seen the guidance and have participated in probably industry calls like you're doing now, uh, I think this, this should not be much of an issue at all. You know, we are certainly concerned about air requirements, right? We don't want pressure on appraisers. That's not, that's, we certainly don't advocate that, right? But at the end of the day, that's not actually our place. It's, it would be very difficult for us uh, to go to them and explain that to them. I don't think you're going to feel that pressure. And if you do, there, there are agencies that you can report those things to. Um, but I, I think what I would do is if you've got that in hand, you've got our guidance in hand, you may want to provide it to them and go, well, but this is, but this is the guidance from Fannie and Freddie. I think one thing I do want to caveat out of all of this, keep in mind, you just don't do um, appraisal work or uh, agencies, that being um, whether any of the government agencies, Fannie or Freddie, right? There's also portfolio lending that exists. You know, a portfolio lender may, for whatever reason, um, do something a little different than this. I'm, I'm sure they probably won't. I'm sure they'll continue this practice just for simplicity's sake. But keeping in mind, if something is alternative, some of the guidance that we're giving you, you may very well want to ask uh, your, your client if that's the case. Um, if, it is, if, you, if they understand that it's coming uh, down, you know, through the agencies, well, then, then we would want to follow this guidance. If it's for something else, then they may give you an alternative set of instructions. Uh, but the likelihood is I think the industry will follow this just for simplicity's sake. Question 14. Uh, I have personally encountered lenders who are calling around and shopping for appraisers who are willing to make interior inspection to the property because many of their regular appraisers do not feel safe making inspections. Should lenders be doing this, uh, given the potential for appraisers becoming infected and or spreading the infection? Again, safety first. Uh, we're not advocating for anybody to take that, that approach. Um, but again, that's a little out of our jurisdiction. Um, you know, there are, there are, you know, we still want to make sure that people are complying with AIR. Uh, we shouldn't be doing that. But again, I tend to think a lot of these questions came late last week, early this week, and I'm hopeful that this guidance uh, eliminates any of that type of friction that may be happening in the marketplace. Um, you know, in a lot of cases with the, the turn, you know, with the ability to turn around appraisals quick anyhow, these other options may actually be a better thing, so the likelihood is that we should have a calming of that. Question 15, is there a possibility that the guidance in the lender letter 2020-04 uh, may be extended beyond May 17th? That's certainly possible. Um, you know, this was something that's vetted at, at the highest levels of Fannie and Freddie, uh, along with our regulator, FHFA. Uh, that is a date that they came up with. Um, everything usually has a sunset to it. Uh, that's the current sunset. If, by chance, there are issues in the, um, if there are issues uh, that happen uh, and that we need to extend that, uh, those updates will be issued accordingly. Uh, again, another good reason to probably go online and sign up. Uh, so that you get any of those um, any of those changes directly emailed to you when they happen. Question 16: According to Lender Letter 2020-4, a desktop appraisal is preferable to an appraisal with an exterior inspection. Why is this? What would why wouldn't it be better for the appraiser to at least view the exterior of the subject property? So keep in mind, the desktop is not something that we're asking happen for a refinance. Uh, we're allowing that to happen on the purchases, and the strong likelihood is there's much more information available online 
um, through MLS and the like, that you're actually getting as much information um, as, as you can uh, through those photos. Uh, through those photos, uh, then you would get, um, uh, you know, just doing the exterior. So that's the logic, is that there's probably uh, online information that would uh, very much so give you um, a better depth of knowledge of the interior, and that's why we're willing to allow that to happen. You know, plus uh, it obviously keeps people out of, out of the public, which is, you know, really one of our objectives. Question 17, will Fannie Mae provide additional guidance for lenders and investors regarding the acceptability of the desktop appraisal? Um, currently, the push for full inspection appraisals appear to be driven by lenders. So again, I think that's, that's pretty much answered in some of these other questions, uh, phrased a little differently. But yes, we've provided the guidance out. We'll continue to do that. We'll make the updates as we see fit. Um, you know, the Q&As and, and, and as people bring new questions to the table, uh, we will try to answer them the best we can and provide the best guidance that we can uh, to get us through uh, what is obviously uh, a very interesting and difficult time for everybody. Question 18, uh, if the state issues a stay-at-home or shelter-in-place order um, that includes the uh, real estate appraisers, does Fannie Mae expect the appraisers to comply with the lender demands um, or the state orders. Uh, you need to need to deal with the ordinances and the restrictions that are put in place. Uh, we don't advocate for one thing over another. It is up to you to figure out within your jurisdiction. I've seen a few questions kind of pop up around um, just that, about the, the stay at home or shelter in place type of orders. You need to understand whether or not that is, uh, whether the financial services piece falls into that or not. Um, I'm not here to give you advice one way or the other. That will be something that you'll have to figure out on your own. Uh, work with your lender, and communication's key, uh, and figure out exactly uh, what is the appropriate level of inspection based off of the restrictions uh, that you may be feeling in those markets. Question 19, if I decide, uh, if I decide that there is um, not enough credible information available about the property to complete the exterior desk, uh, or, or desktop appraisal, uh, I, but I do not feel comfortable entering someone's home, will Fannie Mae allow the lender to pause the appraisal process? Um, again, what we're saying through this, if you cannot, this, is, this goes back to the basic principles of appraising. So if you can't get enough information in order to provide a credible uh, assignment results, then, then you need to take a step back, talk to your client or your lender, and explain to them that's unable for you to complete the assignment. Now, we're hoping that they're understanding of that, um, but again, we're not advocating for anybody to violate USPAP, that's for sure. Um, those were the primary questions. I do want to touch on a couple things. So I think Michael did a pretty good, did a very good job of explaining it, but I'll touch on it one more time. You know, desktop, in our mind, is you don't leave your desk, right? You've got no inspection uh, uh, in the field. Uh, the exterior is you've, you've done just that. You have gone out. You have seen the property. Uh, the very two distinct difference. A traditional appraisal um, where you're doing everything, where you're out and inspecting, uh, you know, is still on the table for us. Um, but we understand the challenges there may be in certain areas in order to do that. So that's why the flexibility is in place. Bye.